皆さんこんにちは、えー、本日は、えー、東京都渋谷公園通りギャラリー、えー、の展覧会「千のしぐさ」の関連イベントであるトークイベントをお届けいたします、えー、私は本店を担当いたしました、えー、東京都渋谷公園通りギャラリー学芸員の佐藤真美子です展覧会「千のしぐさ」は日本とアメリカのアールベットの作家10名の、えー、千のしぐさをなぞる展覧会です本日は、えー、千のしぐさの出展作家のうち、えー、スーザン・ジャノードワイト・マッキントッシュダン・ミラートニ,ベトニー・ペデモンテジリスコットの5名が所属する、えー、クリエイティブ・グロース・アート・センターの名誉ディレクターの、えー、トム・リ・マリアさんをお招きし、えー、クリエイティブ・グロースについてまた5名の作家の皆さんの作品や制作の様子などについてお話を伺いたいと思います。それでは改めましてゲストのご紹介をいたします。トムリマリアさんです。今日はどうぞよろしくお願いいたします。さて、私は今、千のしぐさの展示室、展覧会会場からお届けしているんですけれども、私のこの後ろに見えますのは、日本の作家、斎藤雄一の作品です。でこの、まあ、スペース、もうちょっと広いんですけれども、このスペースには、えー、スペースというのは、展覧会の中でも一つのピークに当たる、えー、スペースに、スペースでして、えー、実はこの、えー、斉藤雄一と、えー、もう一人、ダン・ミラーの、えー、作品を一緒に、えー、見ていただける空間となっています。でまあ、この二人というのは、同じ文字というのを、まあ、テーマに、まあ、モチーフに描いている作家になります。でまあトムさんと呼ばせていただきたいんですけどトムさんの後ろにも何,何かちょっと見覚えのある、えー、絵がかかっているかなと思うんですけれどもその、まあ、後ろの絵についても含めて、えー、トムさん自己紹介をお願いできますか Yes, so, こんにちは、everyone, hello. I'm very happy to be with you tonight and it's very much a privilege to have the creative growth artists included in the exhibition. The、uh, work behind me is interesting because it's uh, uh, a work by Dan Miller, who's in the exhibition, and uh, both, um, both of us have chosen to have works that are similar behind us today. What you'll notice is Dan Miller is, a, is an artist who uses a lot of line and gesture、um, in his work, and he uses letters and words as well. Which is a very important part of some of the work that we will be seeing in the exhibition. So I'm sure we'll talk more about it, but I'm very happy、um, to have it behind me and to be with you today. じゃあ、えー、トムさん、ご自身の、えー、自己紹介、簡単にお願いできますでしょうか Yes. So、um, I have worked at Creative Growth for 23 years as the director. Before that, my training is as an artist. As a photographer and a filmmaker, and then as a teacher.、Um, but then I started to work at museums and as an arts administrator. Before coming to Creative Growth, I worked at the University of California Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive as the assistant director. So it's important that、um, people understand that Creative Growth is an arts center, even though. Our artists have disabilities. We all come from the art world and really see that our center is a part of the、um, art world. And that is my background as well. Thank you very much. Tom さんが、えっと、クリエイティブグロースに関わるきっかけとか、まあ、その前の、えっと、キャリアとかも伺うことができて、まあ、そして何より。まあ、アートクリエイティブグロースにおいてアート、えー、でアートセンターであることが重要だっていうのはあの非常にあの本当に重要なあのポイントだなとあの思います。じゃあその、まあ、クリエイティブグロースアートセンターについて、まあ、もう少し、えー、詳しく、えー、例えば、まあえー、設立の設立生まれたあの経緯ですとか、えー、これまでどんな活動をあの、まあ、アートに、えー焦点を当てた活動でどういうふうに、えー、展開、えー、してきたかとか、まあ、あの現在に至るまでの活動、えー、特徴などをあのお聞かせください。Yes. So, Creative Growth was founded in 1974. And to our knowledge, it's one of the oldest independent art centers for people with disabilities in the world. 
And if we look at the 1970s, we are in Oakland, California, near San Francisco, California. It was a time of social change. And it was a time when people with disabilities were becoming more um, a part of society. In the United States, people with disabilities often grew up in hospitals or hidden away. And that started to change. And so in the 1970s, California is having a change of social structure. People, there's more freedom. Um, th there's free speech movements. There's hippie culture. So things are changing. And as people with disabilities became more a part of society, artists came together mm. with the belief that art and an art studio for people with disabilities mm. would really help them become a part of society and also allow them to express themselves creatively. Mm. So our founders, put art supplies in their own home mm -hmm. and invited people with disabilities to start to come and be creative. Mm -hmm. And they developed a plan right away that it would be an artist run space, mm -hmm. that, that art would be the main focus, that there would be a gallery, that the public would come in and view the works in the gallery. And this would be a great way for the general population to meet in many ways for the first time people with disabilities. So this was the plan. In, a night, in the 1970s, this is a very um, radical idea. Um, we are used to seeing people with disabilities now. That wasn't so much the case. So it was a very important idea at the time. The other very important idea was that the staff and the people that would come to work at Creative Growth were all artists. Mm -hmm. And that artists had the ability to help people with disabilities advance as artists, mm -hmm. because we understand the time it takes to make art mm -hmm. and the freedom that one needs um, to be creative. And that's been an important part of our philosophy um, mm -hmm. since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So many things have changed and our artists have been presented in prestigious museums and galleries such as yours, mm -hmm. but the basic ideas still remain the same. We now have 160 artists mm -hmm. who work in our studio mm -hmm. every day making work. The staff are artists. They make their own work in any way they want. Mm -hmm. And then we have a gallery that exhibits and sells the art to the public. So we've gotten bigger and more advanced, but the idea is still the same. Thank you. 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 Artist program, mm -hmm. and that allows our artists to work. Many of, of our artists work with us for many years, so it allows them to meet new artists and to partner with them. Mm -hmm. During the last two years of the pandemic, we have not had that very many visitors because of the situation. But yes, it's an important part of our program. Mm -hmm. え、Yes, so something that's changed, in, especially when you ask about visiting artists, while our program has stayed the same, the art world has changed. Mm. And I think many contemporary artists yeah. now come to recognize creative growth artists as being important and interesting mm. um, artists in their own right. 
and we have more partnerships because of that. So it's been interesting to see how our work over the years has become more accepted around the world. ありがとうございます。なかなかあの、まあ、日本でもあの今はそういったあの創作活動に力を入れている施設っていうのはだいぶ増えてきたとは思うんですけれどもそれでもあのやはりあの職員の方でスタッフが全員まあアートに関わるアーティストだということっていうのはなかなか難しい、まあ、現状にあると思うので、まあ、非常にあのなんていうか刺激を受けるあのべきあの施設だなと思ってます。Yes, and our challenge right now is to see how our artists with disabilities could advance even more. How can they become leaders of the organization? How can they support other artists and other people with disabilities? We have artists now that are role models for other people with disabilities who want to become artists, but we really are working to have them serve as leaders of the organization as well. Thank you very much. まあ、あのそういったあの非常に、まあ、重要なあの国際的に重要な施設のクリエイティブグロースアートセンターに今回は、まあ、特別協力という形でこの,あの展覧会「千のしぐさ」に関わっていただけたことを、まあ、改めてあの光栄に<笑>思いました、えー、5人もあの作家5人の作家いらっしゃいますのであの5人の作家の人の,あの皆さんについてあの詳しく、えー、作品とかあの作家のご自身についてあの伺っていきたいと思いますまあ、まず、まあ、その前にというかあのまずその私があのこの「千のしぐさ」の展覧会に、まあ、この5人の,あの作家をあの出展したいとあの最初にお話しした時は、まあ、さ最初の感想というかあの印象はいかがでしたか Well, it's always a great privilege. It was an extraordinary invitation to have our artists、uh, uh, be welcomed by you in. Tokyo in the gallery. So it's always such an honor and a pleasure.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, for the artists, too, when we share the news, they're very excited. And、uh, it's unfortunate that we can't come and see this year, that some of the artists can't travel. And,、uh, but we'll be excited to see the pictures.、Mm -hmm. So it's, an, a, it's always an achievement and an accomplishment and a privilege to be invited.、Mm -hmm. And I think that the artists,、um, Respond mostly by being encouraged to make even better work because they feel like people understand and appreciate what they're doing. So they feel validated and they feel welcomed by the art world, and that's the best part. よかったです。<笑>ちょっとあの皆さんの反応を聞いて、ちょっと安心しました。でまあ、やっぱりクリエイティブグロースにはたくさんの,、ね、あのアーティストがいて、えー、私もあのどの作家にの作品をあの展覧会で、ねまあ、出したらいいかっていうのはもう非常にあの悩みました。Well, I was going to ask you the same question.、Yeah. Why did you think of creative growth? And what was the,、um, because for us, it's always very、uh, important when somebody invites us. So,、um, it's always good to know how you think of the creative growth artist and why you、um, chose not only the artist you chose, but the center in general. If you could comment on that. Thank you very much. First, creative growth was chosen. I think it was in 2005 years ago. I think it was in 2005 years ago. RV とか、まあ、セーフトートアートの、えー、を、まあ、観察というかね見続けてきたんですけれども、えー、国内外のアートフェアとか、まあ、いろんなところで見かける、えー、見かけた時にやっぱりクリエイティブグロースアートセンターっていうものを知った時に、まあ、そこで展示されているものとかあるいは、まあ、ウェブサイトもそうですし、えーまあ、そういったところで見かける作品がやはりこう日本でえー、その当時というか、えー、見かけるものともまた違う、えーまあ、手法だったり印象だったりあの非常に力強い作品であるっていうのをあの思ったので長く、えー、いつか自分が、まあ、展覧会をする時が来たら、えー、お借りしてみたい、まあ、そういう時が来るかどうかわからない状況でしたけれどもお借りしたいと,と長く思ってきました。あだからそうですね今回はあの長年の夢が叶ったという、まあ、展覧会にあたります。Well, it's fantastic for us as well. And I think, again, one of the things that makes the artists really 
strong is that we've had almost 50 years and many of the artists have worked with us for many years. Mm -hmm. And we really believe that um, it takes years for an artist to develop their practice. So we don't hurry them. And many similar centers now around the world have only been around for a few years. So we have that advantage. Mm -hmm. And I think because we are also very um, dedicated to the idea of artists working with artists and that we're an art center, um, I think that helps uh, with the quality of the work that comes from our artists. そうですねやっぱりそのアートセンターだっていうのをまあ非常に強くこう感じるような、まああのー、なんです見せ方というのかな見せか作品はもちろんなんですけれど見せ方も含めて非常に、まああのーまあ、美術作品として、あのー、しっかり見せるっていうのが、まああのー、長年、あのー、の活動を見ていてそういったことも感じ取れたので、あのーまあ、私はあの非常にこう、えー、といつか。あのー関わってみたいと思ってましたで、まあ、そういった意味でもその施設クリエイティブグロースアートセンターという施設にもあの焦点を当てるというか、まあ、特別協力としてあの名,前名前を出したりとか、えーまあ、その映,像映像を少しあの会場で流したりとかってしてるのは、まあ、やはり、えー、日本の状況もだいぶ、えー、なんていうんですか成長はしてるんですけれどもさらに、まあ、刺激というか。えーまあ、アメリカでの,あの現状というかアメリカであの非常に大きな役割,役割を担っている施設の状況というのを日本の人にも見てほしかったで、まあ、相互に刺激を与え,な与え合いながらあさらなるこう展開というかをあのが見られたらなと思って、まあ、施設そのものにも焦点を当てました。Yes, I've been, had the, I've had the privilege to visit Japan many times over the last 20 years、uh, as part of my work with Creative Growth. And I think that the advancements for people with disabilities have been very noticeable and very big during that time. I also think that、um, the idea of Creative Growth in Japan 20 or 30 years ago was、um, not so fully understood. And now I think it's、um, seen very clearly as a A positive way to be creative and to advance the lives of people with disabilities, not only as artists, but also as members of our society and our communities. Thank you very much. The question was, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. えーまあ、今回、あのーまあ、非常に、まあ、あの作家を選ぶのに悩んだんですけれどもやはり「線」というテーマを私があの設定しましたので、まあ、それに関わるあの作家といえばっていうので思い浮かんだのが、えー、最初に思い浮かんだのがドワイト・マッキントッシュと、えー、ダン・ミラーの2人でしたなので、まあ、ここでは最初にこの2人についてあの詳しく伺っていこうかなと思いますでこの2人に、えー、共通するのは、まあまあ、まずは「線」とあとは文字かなとあの思っています。えー、で、まあ、この2人について、えー、まあ、トモさんから、えー、クリエイティブグロースでのまあ、活動、えー、まあ、あとはまあ、制作の様子だとか、あとはその文字を含めたモチーフの特徴、えー、など、えー、まずはそのあたりについてお聞かせいただきたいと思います。Yes, well, the to compare Dwight McIntosh and Dan Miller is it... It's interesting because there are many similarities but differences.、Mm -hmm. So, Dwight McIntosh was very、um, much a part of the old era where people with disabilities would immediately go to live in hospitals. So, he went to live in a hospital when he was 12 years old.、Mm -hmm. And Dwight McIntosh, when he was going into the hospital, had an x ray of his throat. Because he had to do surgery on his tonsils. And he saw that x ray. And then he sat in the hospital for 60 years before being released and coming to Creative Growth at age 72. So he's the generation of people with disabilities that were almost not allowed to be a part of the world.、Um, and that x ray that he saw and thought about for 60 years influenced his work very much. 
So if you look at the drawings of the bodies and the figures and all the lines together, he's essentially trying to draw the x-ray that he saw of his own body when he was young, how the bones and the fingers and the hands come together and overlay. Yeah. So what we see in Dwight McIntosh's work is the fact that he waited until the age of 72 before he was allowed to be creative. That's when he got out of the hospital and came to us. So it speaks to how urgently human beings want to be creative and want to communicate. And I think if you look at the lines in his work, you see how urgent it is for him to tell his story, to draw his history, to you know, remember his x-ray, to draw the things around him, um, very essential and very powerful to see his expression. And so his path to making art is not so different than Dan Miller's. Dan is younger and as a boy went to schools for people with disabilities. So he was a little bit more in the world, but Dan is autistic and doesn't really use words to speak. So when he was a boy, his mother would try to teach him to speak by spelling the words with him. So he would, and she would hope that he would try to speak those words. And Dan never spoke those words, but when he came to Creative Growth, he started to draw all the words that she was teaching him. So he was learning and wanting to speak, but in a different way. And Creative Growth allowed him to find that way. So what we see between these two men are essentially people that have been asked not to speak to us for their whole lives, but yet through the power of art, they are now able to. And I think we see in the intensity and the brilliance of their work, how important it was and is for them to say to us, this is what I'm thinking about. This is who I am. This is the conversation I want to have with you. And I am just like you, a person in the world. And I hope the lesson for all of us is that without a place like creative growth, these lives would be lost and we would not have the art that we are experiencing in the exhibition. And I hope that um, is a calling for all of us to work to make art an important part of the lives of everyone. まあ、そうですよねあの私たち自身、まあ、あの私はなかなか絵がうまくないですけれどもでも何かこう描くとか表現するっていう、まあ、アートに関わることっていうのは、まあ、非常に重要な何でしょう、えー、とコミュニケーションのツールの、まあ、一つかなと思ってます、まあ、それがやはりあの障害のある人とかなかなかこう、えー、自由に。何かを発したりとか思いを出せない人にとってはあの非常により重要なツールになっているのかなっていうのはやはりあのクリエイティブグロースの,あのアーティストの作品とか今聞いた、まあ、あのドワイト・マキノシとダン・ミラーの作品お話を聞いてもあの非常によくあの分かりました。Yes, and I like to think that when one path is broken,、um, the others become stronger. So perhaps you can't use words to speak. The way that you're going to speak using art will be that much more powerful. No, so this ne. I know you could, what does he make on a gender? On a gender no second, Arbeto toka, Masefi toka, Arbeto toka, I need Kakaro to mon this kid. Tateva, what does he do? She, well, I know, it will be no naka ka, it will be it. 選ぶことができるっていうのはあるんですけれども、えー、と関わる作家の皆さんとかではやはりもうそれ,それしかそれがもう唯一の,あの、えー、と表現するすべっていうか、えー、というところを、まあ、強くこうやっぱり感じる。ところがあって、まあ、そういったものを強く感じる作,作品というのは往々にしてやはりあの力強さというかかなりこう、えーまあ、訴えかけてくるものが強いっていうあの傾向に、まあ、あるなっていうのがこれまで私が、まあ、作多くの作品見てきて、まあ、感じてきたことなので、まあ、あのトモさんのおっしゃることあの非常によくあの分かります。でまあ、じゃあお話しいただいたあのその、えー、マキトシとあの、えー、ミラーについて、まあ
、やっぱりこう少しお話戻っちゃいますけれども、あのエクステンの、えー、に、まあ、非常に関心を持ってたっていうマッキントッシュは、本当にその通りだなっていうのが、あのよく絵を見たらあの分,かり、ま、分かって、まあ、そう見えてるのかなって思わせるというか、まあえー、と人体とか、えー、などもこう透けてあの描かれてるんですけれども、実際にこうマッキントッシュはそう見えてるのかなって思わせるような絵が、えー、ありますよね。えまあ、それはそういった幼い頃というかそういったあの、えー、手術の経験、えー、があってのことなんだなっていうのは、まあ、非常にあの、えー、説得力があるというか納得できるあのエピソードでした。まあ、あとはまあミラーについて、えー、言えばやはりあの文字をやはり教えてもらって。だ,だなっていうのは分かると言いますか、まあ、やはりこう単語のようなものが見えるので、まあ、それがお母さんからお母様からあの習った言葉だったりあのしたっていうのであの非常にこう何て言うでしょう意味のない言葉とかだけじゃなくてやはり言葉になってるものっていうのを見られるところが、まあ、非常にあの、えー、そういった背景っていうのを知れてあの知ることができました。Yes, and in, in the work of Dan Miller, it's important to note、um, that early in his work, you could see the letters and the words that he was writing. And as his work advanced, it becomes more and more abstract.、Mm -hmm. So it changes. And it, that's important for me because sometimes I hear people say that artists with disabilities don't evolve or grow in the same way that an academically trained artist、um, would. And I answer by saying, look at Dan Miller's work from his early drawings to his large, very large paintings now that are completely abstract, and to even the works he makes on ceramics or works he makes on the typewriter with the words that look very abstract. So he is a very evolved and growing artist. 私もあのあの非常にあの共感するところです。あのやはりこのジャンルの作は本当にあの同じものばかりをずっと書いているというか作っているというような印象をまあ持たれる方もいるかもしれないんですけれどもよくやはりそのえ作り手作家のえ作品を見てまああの変遷というんですかねを見てみるとやはりえ変,わ変わるでそれもあのやはりそのえ作家がたくさん作ることによってあの展開っていうんですか,ですかね描き方だったりとか関心を持つことの少しずつの変化っていうのが、まあ、描写に現れてるっていうことはよく見られるんですね。ですのであのダンビラの作品の展開っていうのも、まあ、今回選んだあの4点、えー、の中でもそのおっしゃったようにタイプライターがあるものも含めたんですけれどもすごく違いがあの分かる。のでその成長しているっていうまあそのそうですねだからえっと作風の変遷っていうのかなのが生まれているっていうのは本当にその通りだと思います。There's an interesting interesting story about the typewriter. We had an old typewriter creator growth, and one day Dan just starts to type the words onto the paper, and this is a surprise to all of us because he's never done it before. So he started this by himself. So I asked his sister, did he ever type as a boy? And she said, no, but he used to take the typewriter, the machine apart, and put all the parts out. And then he would put it back together again. He liked the machine. And later, when he became an artist, it became essentially like his paintbrush, a tool that he used、um, as part of his、uh, work.、Mm. <laughs> so, そうえー、ですので、まあ、そういったエピソードも聞,聞いて、まあ、改めてこの2人の,あのドワイト・マッキントシュとダン・ミラーの作品を比較してみると、まあ、線という意味でもあの、まあ、ダンあでマッキントッシュの方は、まあ、どちらかというとこう手,の手の動きというか体の動きが現れているような、まあ、非常にこう躍動感のあるというか少し運動性の強いあの線かなというのは思っていますし一方で、えー、ダン・ミラーの方は先ほどおっしゃっていただいたように、まあ、いろんな、えーまあ、タイプライターを含めて細い線ボールペンペンの細い線だとかあるいはそのペイント絵の具の、えー、太い線とか、まあ、あとは色も、えー、加わってきますので非常にこう平面平面作品なんですけれども奥行き、えー、を感じていてまあ
、えー、見てても少しこう、えー、立体感っていうんですかね、えー、三次元的なそういったものも感じるようなあの作品だなっていうのをあの思っています。Yes, well, Dan Miller's work is as essentially three dimensional because he builds the words on top of each other. So it becomes very、um, complex and three dimensional. Dwight McIntosh's work is similar in three dimensions, but you see through it like an X ray. So they both involve these different kinds of layers. I think there is a kind of quality to Dwight McIntosh's line that's a little bit shaky because he's an old man when he starts to draw. <laughs> So I think we see that in his work as well. So, no, who they know, but what does he want to keep it? Yes, I think so. 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 じゃあ次は、えー、スーザン・ジャノンについてあのお話伺いたいなと思っていますでまあジャノンは今回えー、日本での展示が初めて、えー、とお聞きしてますので、まああのえー、ここにいらした皆さんはあの初めてというか、ね、今まで見た日本では見られなかったものを見,られ見ることができるということで大変、まあ、貴重な機会になってるかなと思います。でまあ、ジャノンは、えーまあ、今回、えー、展示させていただいたのは、まあ、ドローイング、えー、なんですけれどもあの他にも、えー、いろんな、あのーまあ、表現メディアを使った作品を制作しているっていうのもあの聞きますので、まあ、その辺りも含めてあのクリエイティブグロースの様子とか、あのー、ジャノンについてお聞かせいただけますでしょうか。Yes, well, I've、um, had the pleasure to work with Susan for over 20 years now. Um, from the time she first started to come to Creative Growth. And Susan is delightful to be around. She、um, has a very big personality, likes to talk, is very friendly, makes jokes. But then when she works, she's very quiet and focused. So who she is as a person and the work she makes are very、um, different from each other. So you see this woman who is very lively, suddenly getting very quiet. And drawing very small little squares and doing this meticulous work. And it's very interesting to see. And Susan will talk about everything except what she's doing, which is something that I've seen in other creative growth artists. And that for me is something that's interesting about looking at the artist's work, is it's really up to us. To try to understand and enjoy what she's making for us. And some people find that、um, discomforting. They want to know what the artist has to say. And for me, I find that exciting because I think what the artist has to say is what she's put on the paper. I think if we look at Susan's、um, grids and squares, it's you know, easy to see that she's trying to bring organization to the world. Or to create a kind of system that's maybe soothing or comforting to her. And for many people with disabilities, their lives have not been particularly easy. So I think she's trying to organize、um, and present images that are、um, comforting in a way or organized. Now, Susan has also been making videos that have been very、um, interesting and、um, well received. She has a video that was just purchased by the Brooklyn Museum in New York for the permanent collection. And it's interesting because she, the video is very much how she is, is in terms of how she uses language. She wanted to ask all of her friends questions. So she wrote questions.、Mm-hmm. And then she got in front of the camera to ans- ask people the questions, but she became very shy.、Mm-hmm. So she just stood there. And then she decided that she would ask herself the questions later as、mm-hmm. her voice on the video. So in the video, she asks very simple questions, but combined, they become very powerful. She'll say something simple like, What is your favorite color? Mm-hmm. Or, what did you have for dinner last night?、Mm-hmm. But then she'll say, What do you think about when you're alone? What is the la- when is the last time you saw your favorite person? Do you know anyone that's died? 
And over time, it becomes these very powerful questions about who we are as people in the world. She asks, if you could be anybody, who would you be? And I think this is her trying to understand her role in the world and her role as an artist. So the questions are very simple, but the answers are very complicated. And uh, I think she has challenged us in many ways. And I appreciate that about her work. One of the things I hear about people with intellectual disabilities sometimes is that they don't challenge us intellectually. And I don't find that to be true at all. I think if we look at Susan's work, if we look at Dan Miller's work, we're being challenged to think um, for ourselves and to be challenged to think in new ways all the time by their work. おっしゃる通りすごくシンプルなんだけれどもどんどん質問が続くに従ってちょっとこう答えるのが2時間がかかっちゃうようなというか私自身考えあのてしまうようなあの質問があったのであのいやあのスーダンの作品ビデオの作
を、あのー、でを作っている、えー、ジュディ・スコットとトニー・ペデモンテについてあのお話を伺いたいと思います。でまあ、特にこの2人に関してはあのまあ立体作品ということもありますし少しこう大,大きめ他の作家よりも大きなボリュームを持っているので、まあ、あのこの,、ね、あのコロナとかあの世界の少し不安定な状況の中で無事にあの日本にあの持ってこられたこと自体それだけでもまず私は非常に感慨深いものがあります。でまあ、この2人に関してはやはり同じクリエイティブグロースにあの所属していてそして同じファイバーアートということからよくこう影響関係というか、まあ、似てるとかあのその影響関係っていうのを、まああのえー、聞かれることも多いのかなと思うんですけれども、まあ、その辺りも含めて、まあ、クリエイティブグロースの制作での活動の様子とか、えー、作品の特徴、えー、あるいは違いなどについて少しお聞かせいただけますでしょうか。Yes, well, this is a, such an interesting question to compare Judith Scott with Tony p a d a m o n t e、um, Judith Scott, some people may know, is probably the most、um, well known or famous creative growth artist, and her work is in museum collections around the world. And she had a very compelling childhood, terrible, where she was separated from her twin sister. and Lived in an institution. They didn't know she was deaf and she never acquired language. And she came to creative growth very late in life and sort of traumatized、um, about her life and began to make the work、um, by picking up fiber sculptures and wrapping objects. So Judith's practice reflected the life of someone that grew up. In a hospital, in an institution. She would start to go around the studio and take things, gather things, and bury them and protect them in fiber. And at night, she would be very afraid they'd be stolen. So she'd hide them under her table and she tried to build and possess things. Her whole life, she never had anything. So I think she wanted to own things and she wanted to make them safe and she wanted to hide them. Because things in the hospital would be stolen. And I think her practice、um, as an artist comes from her life experience.、Mm-hmm. So she continued making work for almost 20 years until she died. And her work became quite respected and is in museum collections around the world. And about a few years after that, Tony p e d a m o n t e comes to Creative Growth and starts to make work. That looks similar. And Tony had never seen Judith Scott's work or never knew her. And of course, it raised a lot of questions for me. So at first, I thought, how is the work the same? How is it different? I was very confused about understanding、um, the differences or the similarities between the two. And then I think probably it was because the forms that they use with the fiber sculpture. Are not so common.、Mm-hmm. And then it occurred to me that it's not so different from having two abstract painters. They're working in a style that、um, is similar, but the work itself is very different. So I started to think about that. And if we look at the work, that's really quite different.、Yeah. Judith Scott's work is actually almost conceptual, the way she's hiding things and protecting things. And bundling things and trying to build a kind of cocoon or a sort of safety net around her. And I think Tony's work is much more formal. It's about color and line and surfaces. So I would say that Tony p e d a m o n t e is a much more formal artist. The form of his works are very beautiful and contemporary and modern and colorful. And I think that they're、um, expressive that way, almost in the way an abstract painting would be expressive. And I think that Judith Scott's work is much more of a powerful statement about her life and her experiences. And really, some of the first people that responded positively to Judith Scott's work were other artists and conceptual artists because they loved the idea that. 
there was something hidden inside and we would never know what it was. And I think the first people that responded to Tony Petamonte's work were just really um, in love with the visual uh, beauty of the pieces. Mm -hmm. So they certainly both use the line, um, the, but they use it in different ways. And I think the meaning of the work is different, although visually there are similarities. Mm -hmm. の部分もよくわかりました。で、やっぱりあの同じくそのトムさんがおっしゃるようにこう似てるって一見思われる理由っていうのはやはりこう少しこうなんて言うんでしょうか。まあ、ファイバーの立体っていうところで、まあ、目
、まあ、今回ねあの無事にトニーとあのジュディスの作品が来てくれましたので日本の,あの皆さんもその2つの、えー、違いっていうのもよくあの会場で見ていただくことができるのではないかなと思っています。じゃあまだまだ本当はお話をですねいっぱいあのしたいところなんですけれどもそろそろあの終わりの時間も近づいてきましたので、えー、今日の、えー、トークの感想をえー、トムさんにお伺いしたいと思うんですけれども、トムさん、今日はいかがでしたでしょうか ?Yes, well, I'm always very,、um, first of all, thank you for inviting me to talk about the artists. I wish they were here today too to talk,、um, but the audience gets to see their work and that's the most beautiful thing. And、um, I know that the artists and myself would love to hear what the audience, how they respond to the works once the show has been seen by more people. And then thank you for this nice discussion. I thought the questions were very thought provoking and intelligent. So thank you. And thank you mostly for、um, organizing such a beautiful show and for including our artists、um, in it. Thank you very much. 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 ぶり3年以来の初めての展覧会ですね、約、まあ、20年ぶりぐらいの,あの展示になりますので、やはりあの日本の皆様、多くの皆様にも改めてあのジュディ・スコットの作品もよく、まあ、見ていただけたらなと思っています。Yes, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years, and、uh, her, her work has always found a, a very big welcome in Japan, so it's wonderful to have her work back in Tokyo. じゃあ今日はあの短い時間でしたがあの5名の作家の皆さんについて、まあえー、クリエイティブグロースに、まあ、長く携わってこられて近間近で、あのーえー、作家の様子を見てきた、えー、トムさんから、えー、たくさんの、えー、お話聞く,とか聞くことができて大変貴重な機会になったと思います。ありがとうございました。で、お話だけでも十分楽しいんですけれども、やっぱり会場で、えー、このトークを見ている皆さんには会場で作品をじっくり見ていただいて、えー、それぞれの線の仕草をご堪能いただければと思っています。Yes, これで、I... yeah. <笑>これで、あのクリエイティブゴースの,あの名誉ディレクターのトム・ディ・マリアさんの、えー、トークをあの終了したいと思います。トムさん、どうもありがとうございました。Thank you so much. Arigato. 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 Arigato.